Everything from Allah is a truth, there's no deception, there's no deception in creation inshaAllah. What do we got? As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah This was before you asked this, you spoke about the fire. Uh, Shaykh, can you please tell us about the reality of Nur and Nar? And how does Allah control the evil that He created? Can we say that evil is Nar in general and was created from Nur of Allah? Because Allah is the Nur of heaven and earth? Or should we say evil is a part of Nar and not all the Nar is general? No, we should say nothing, just read the articles. You're coming in and asking too high. Just come from beginning, meditate, make your heart, connect your heart. Allah has nothing on His likeness. So Allah created light, that light is called Muhammadun Rasulullah Those whom move towards the light, they move towards the warmth and guidance. And those whom move away from the light, they move towards a coldness and darkness. And evilness is a darkness, zulm. Allah describes zulm which means dark. So fire is its punishment. But at the same time, fire is a joy. So people just have to contemplate, right? So you have a firewall on your computer, why? To burn a virus that comes towards you. So is that fire bad or fire that burns evilness? No, it's a fire that burns evilness. So everyone has these two lights. Everyone has a nur but they have to have a nar, so enter the fire. But people say, oh this is Jahannam. Yeah, Jahannam is going to be painful for people whom have a, a lot of things on them, bad character, bad desires. So if, imagine now in our computers Allah wants us to know how creation works. You have a firewall and Allah is asking on this road that you're walking, Walk through that firewall so on the other side is clean, virus free. You look at that and say, I'm not going through that because you know you have viruses. So it's going to burn. So is how long am I going to go through that? One day, two days? So I don't know, depends upon how many viruses you brought with you in this realm. So I don't think I have too many, mm, stick your finger in and say, okay maybe it's not that bad. But then what then oh Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan, There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Awliya recited in all of their knot. Be like a moth to the flame. So means they began to meditate and began to say, Ya Rabbi let me enter into this fire. And what they said in the mouth that it burns away everything other than the fire, anything other than that ishq and that love, that doesn't burn. But everything you take into it will burn away. So the mouth, why the mouth is trying to jump into that flame? It's so mesmerized by the light. It lost its own consciousness and just wants to become one with the flame. So it has immense love, right? So it's what we take with us that causes us the difficulty. Bani Israel, they took all their gold with them, they couldn't run fast enough. So Allah is giving to us and the nation of Prophet your paradise doesn't require all those things. Give them away, put it away, don't think about it. So they clean themselves now, they meditate and that's why then these people whom Allah loves, they're being taught about this Divinely fire. Enter this Divinely fire. Many people say, don't go with these shaykhs because you're going to have to sacrifice a lot. 
Well, if you don't want to sacrifice now, would you rather sacrifice in the grave and be tormented in the grave and think, oh my God, all my life I did things wrong? Well, find out now if you did them wrong, it's going to pinch a little bit, hurt a little bit, but at least you'll be in a better condition. Then those have become like exactly like those knots that they're lost in that flame. And, and then the knot would say that, why you only just sit around these people of the flame? Enter the flame, be like them. And that becomes then all these beatific uh, knots that they would recite. So then this becomes the majlis of the people of the flame. And people come and say, it's such a beautiful energy, such a beautiful majlis and then awliya come and inspire in your heart, why are you just sitting with them, why don't you become from them? And now take a life and this is now this path, this is the month, enter the flame. Allah describes this is the most purified light. You have to enter into that fire so that you can have a nur. Otherwise people are just reflecting other people's lights. But what they want for us is open your heart, let the real sun begin to burn within you so that you have a fire. You have a fire of Divine Himma to want to do good, be good, act good. And then the light begins to shine on your face like a moon. Those whom their hearts are illuminated with lights and fire, they heat up, actually heat up, their faces are luminous like a moon. You literally heat up. If they begin to their tafakkur and meditation, they heat up. When they're strong enough they can heat up tens of thousands of people, space and time means nothing. Because immediately they're all connected to their, their, the heart of the shaykh, the shaykh immediately begins to trigger his energy and everybody begins to heat up. And this is not understood yet until the wireless energies come out. When you can charge your phone without a wire you'll understand what the fires of a shaykh is, right? Because you think a Japanese company can give you wireless charging. You don't think the shaykh has wireless charging that Allah gave him first? Yeah, but you have to be on the same frequency. So when you tune yourself to the frequency of the shaykhs and the guides, what happens? You're on their wireless network. As soon as they meditate you're heating up, as soon as they teach you're being downloaded. And that's the reality of fayas. Once we get to that in technology people say, oh, uh uh-huh, now I understood. Just like the entanglement, they're putting out more and more articles on this physics. Then people will understand we're all entangled. But entangled with who? So I should be entangled with the good people, not bad people. InshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum, Sayyidi. Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, is the true connection to the shaykh the same as fana fi shaykh? That's the whole process. To keep the muhabbat of the shaykh, keep your manners, keep your good character, you'll be tested. And then you begin to meditate to enter into the, the realm and the entanglement of the shaykh. The shaykh has an emission of energy and you have your emission of energy with your own desires and opinions and thoughts. You know the shaykhs never entered the debate, no we want shaykh we want you to come and talk to this guy and debate, let's get into a boxing match, absolutely not. They have a knowledge and it's not meant for many people. That meant for people whom Allah wrote for their soul to understand. Because mm. you can't make somebody understand, you can't guide somebody, it has to be from Allah So what's the debate for? There's nothing to debate. They teach whom likes it, alhamdulillah, who doesn't like it, alhamdulillah too. So these are the, the realities of, of this <coughs> entanglement. Now the shaykh puts an energy out, you have to be able to meditate so that you can get entangled into that energy. You have to enter into the energy and the transmission of the shaykh. Doesn't matter space and time, this is not relevant at all to them, it's not a barrier to them, right? Because they're already connecting into the heavens. If that was a barrier they couldn't connect into the heavens. So this realm of dunya is nothing, they're connected to all the shaykhs who have passed. That the fires of their shaykhs are always with them, sitting with them, dressing them. So light and soul is something immensely powerful. Don't limit it with small thinking of your physicality. 
because now the technology will show people. So as soon as you sit and meditate and visualize the shaykh and said that, keep the companionship, fill my heart with your light and then do your awrah, do your zikrs, do your practices, then you're continuously keeping that companionship of light and energy to build ourselves and to build the connection, the manners and, and the good deeds. When I have good manners, the light stays. When I have bad manners, the lights go and then it trains us. And then when we're super trained in it, we start to enter into the fana of the shaykh in which the, the light is so entangled that when he's talking I'm understanding. When he's talking I'm even understanding more. When he's talking I'm getting different information on top of that because I'm so entangled that his energies are coming and illuminating the heart and, and revealing what it needs to reveal. Because not everybody's at the same level. So Shaykh Shaykh's not talking to anybody at the same level. Everyone is understanding now at a completely different level. Not right or left of you understood the same. Some person sitting back there and just say, I'm just waiting for dinner. It doesn't mean anything. Somebody may be online and understanding completely different realities based on their level of, of practices. So this is, the, this is like a portal of energy that opens and whom train themselves to receive from it and relative to their likings. The doctors are perceiving a whole bunch of different things. Our computer texts and science texts, they perceive a whole different realm of knowledges and they begin to email that as you were talking I'm, all this information is coming. So it's a download of files that are coming out, you picking the files that are relevant like a television transmission. So you say, Shaykh, how is that possible? Again, because people only believe in technology, they don't believe in Allah. When you turn on your TV, was it only that one channel that was available? No, because you're analog, you had a certain amount of channels. Now with digital, you could have a thousand channels coming into your living room. What does that mean? These thousand are in the room. They don't appear, they're there, they're being transmitted. So your television is rigged to press a button and go to channel 100. Does that mean the other thousand channels are not there? No, it means they're all there. All broadcasting at the same time because if I put 10 TVs I would have 10 different channels running. So you think who's more powerful, the TV or Allah's creation? or the broadcast companies or Allah's creation. So what Allah give to them is through their heart they have a digital signal that is infinite, has no limit on to what Allah If Allah sends them 10,000 viewers, 10,000 channels will go out. If Allah send them 100,000 viewers, 100,000 channels will go out. The transmission goes out. As soon as you turn your TV set on which is your heart, the transmission comes for you. You don't use his transmission, it comes uniquely for you. So just imagine now televisions and broadcasting, Allah's power much is not even compared with Allahu Akbar. So we just don't seem to understand why technology has it and why wouldn't Allah's servants have it? If they built themselves there must be. So when they give Nisa, from the level of their soul there's infinite signal coming out. One person turns on, picks up nothing, just hungry. Another one picks up and all sorts of information coming to them based on medicine, based on sciences, based on this, based on that. So it's not something that can be limited nor understood. It's Allah's greatness that He has. The technology is supposed to show us Allah's greatness. Not that we worship it, we say, no, Allah is not capable of that stuff, Allah, but Toshiba can do that. InshaAllah. <coughs> As salaamu alaykum, Sayyidi. Walaykum as salaam wa ta'ala. So, why are they pushing this flat earth idea these days? That's what we talked last <laughs> night, yeah, what do you, why? The whole talk last night was shaitan is pushing everything 
to make ignorance, right? We have who and then we have who. <laughs> who of heavens, divine. Shaitan's jealous of that so he made who of dunya, <laughs> right? To kill you, he absolutely doesn't want you here. He, he doesn't like Bani Adam, he doesn't like Adam nor his Bani, his children. So that's it, shaitan doesn't want anyone, think, uh, wants to make everyone ignorant and before they know they enter into this ideology and this thought process, it took them outside of Islam. So Allah well, makes fake moons and fake suns, so then creation must be a, a, a joke or deception. Allah says, no I created creation and truth. Why would He keep that phrase in the Qur'an? Knowing that a day they're going to come and say all of this is fake and Allah says, no we created everything in truth. So many of the ayahs will be understood as we're entering into the last days. Maybe the first days they didn't need to understand, oh, alhamdulillah Allah created everything in truth. When we get to the end days everyone's saying everything is a deception, this whole earth is fake. No, Allah created everything in truth, no crookedness. They are crooked people, they are crooked ideology. I told you this, they, they say the bunnies have eggs, no rabbits don't have eggs. So everything with them is crookedness, <coughs> inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Is there a state in which sleep becomes a form of remembrance and boosts our energy instead of having energy drop or draining caused by non-remembrance <coughs> and attacks? I bought the meditation book and I think that I'm trying my best to keep the sleeping sunnah and practices. Please help me and forgive me. Sleep? Yeah, you meditate, you have energy. These zikr nights, there's a lot of energy, a lot of people can't sleep till six in the morning because there's too much energy. So energy is a state that we try to bring on to ourselves and to remember these are different realities. So I, I meditate to connect to the power source. When you're meditating then these power sources and energies are coming. At the same time when you're new to it, shaitan is trying to put you to sleep. He doesn't want you to connect to the energy source. They whisper, 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 put his hand and then the person begins to fall asleep. Why? Because why would he want you to connect to the power source? So it's like having a Tesla car and every time you go to charge it you get robbed. Remember I told you that if you wanted to rob people <laughs> And you want to find where is a collective group of wealthy people? Tesla charging stations. Why would anyone want to have that type of car? I mean your car is nice but <laughs> it's a collective robbery station. You don't think shaitan has got like something planned, oh yeah let's go, I want to go somewhere where they all have nice cars. It's a charging station, go there and they're all 10, 20, 30, 100,000 dollar cars lined up charging and go rob them now one by one, one by one. It'd be easy, you can't find that anywhere else. Means shaitan is clever, so when somebody's sitting to do tafakkur and contemplation, he's not sitting and just watching them, oh goodness you're going to become powerful then you're going to try to burn me and then he just puts his hand on your head and, and you're snoring, deep snoring. <laughs> so no, this is what our Prophet gave to us, this is your great jihad. That you know you have to have your tea, you have to be ready, you have to prepare yourself for meditation, tafakkur until you can begin to become more and more connected, you feel the fires. That energy coming is now bothering shaitan and making him to be upset. And that's when he begins to try to fight you a little bit more, you be consistent, consistent. This is Jihad al-Akbar. The great fight was to fight against shaitan and, and to save ourselves, it wasn't something easy. Then to give, to, to be of service, to do, to read, to study, this is a great battle. And then to keep the sunnah and the way of Prophet it's not something easy. So this is the, the struggle and those whom struggle will be rewarded and that's why Allah gives them from sifat the sabr They have sabr, patience, they're consistent and Allah grants inshaAllah the reward of their patience, inshaAllah. But to remember something different, tafakkur 
is to contemplate, tadhakkir is to remember, right? So these are different states that open for the servant. Those whom begin tafakkur and contemplation, 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 hook up, the energy hooks up, locks up, tadhakkir is in Allah says, now remember. Because once you're connected to the reality, the shaykh's transmission into you is of your higher reality. Tadhakkir is going to be what? Now remember, Alam al Qur'an khalaq al insan. We have taught you everything, begin your download. So these whom enter into the realities of tadhakkir means they're remembering now what Allah has given to them. From Qur'an's proof, alam al-Qur'an then khalaq al-insan. So alam they were taught something, then Allah created their form. Nobody sent here blank, everybody is like a full CD, all knowledges, alam al-Qur'an khalaq al-insan and then they pushed you out of the plane and you landed down onto this earth. So there is a reality and a treasure within everyone. But they have to first make their tafakkur to enter then into the state of remember. If you don't stop, tafakkur means to be a person whom is vigilant and watching over themselves. Once they're vigilant of themselves, made the connection, then the download of who you are, what Allah taught you, what is your purpose. And that becomes then the, the reality for, for guidance and the embitterment of mankind. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa, bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.